Everyone is going absolutely insane. I'm not just talking about the obviously insane people like Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, but also the regular people in your life, like your coworker, your friend, and your cousin. We're all going completely bonkers over this freaking election. People are losing friends, blocking family members on social media, and screaming at perfect strangers. I'd say we've hit rock bottom, but with 60 days until the election, I don't even think we're halfway there yet. Maybe the worst part about this election fiasco is that nobody knows who to trust anymore. Our mainstream media has failed us by cozying up to the very people they were supposed to be watching. There's an unholy alliance between members of the media and politicians to never really accomplish much of anything. If you're in the media, the less you analyze and the less you question, the higher you'll climb. If you're a politician, the more you pander and the less you tell the truth, the more votes you'll get. The fox isn't just guarding the hen house, but he set up shop in there and he's selling the eggs to the highest bidder. Of course, it's not just mainstream media that's the problem here. Online media has in many cases gone from refreshing and necessary to discredited and untrustworthy. When everyone is reporting on the news, nobody is. When everyone has a website, nobody does. And when anyone with money can fund another operation that looks like a place of journalism when it's really just a front for propaganda, well, then we're officially in trouble. People often ask me who in the news I trust, and at this point, I'm really not sure who to say. There's so much noise out there coming at us from so many different directions that pilfering some truth out of the void is almost impossible. It doesn't have to be like this, nor was it always like this, but somewhere along the way, we got distracted by scandals and drama instead of focusing on issues and reality. Plenty of good people have tried to warn us and tried to correct course, but we didn't heed their warning and now we're left with a system that is chugging along despite itself, not because it's working as it was intended to. I'm not one of the people who wanna burn down the system at all costs, but if right now, at this very moment, we can't recognize that, so that something is very wrong, then is there any chance we'll ever wake up? All that said, it's still pretty great here in the US of A. People all over the world still wanna come here to make a better life for themselves, and you don't see many Americans leaving here to go make a better life elsewhere. Despite how nauseating this election is, look how engaged citizens are. This country is still a melting pot of people from every corner of the globe who came here to make a better life for themselves and their children. Yes, we have our problems, but most of the world would gladly trade their problems with ours. In the midst of all this craziness, one of the most important things any of us can do is figure out what we stand for. As the old adage says, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. And maybe that, more than anything else, explains our current political situation. Nobody in government has really stood for much of anything for the past few years, and because of that, the masses have now elected two of the least favorable candidates in American history. Washington and Lincoln, they are not. All the way back in 1999, a former pro wrestler and movie star named Jesse Ventura ran perhaps the most unlikely campaign in American history. As a member of the Reform Party, he ran against the Democrats, the Republicans, and the system as a whole. Despite all odds, Ventura won the election and became possibly the biggest outsider ever elected to be governor in our entire country's history. Though he left the Reform Party after just a year in office, Ventura had a pretty successful run as governor. He lowered income tax, oversaw several successful infrastructure projects, and perhaps most importantly, got new people, especially young people, involved in politics. Unfortunately, the grind in the system did eventually wear him down, and he didn't run for re-election in 2003. Since leaving office, Ventura has been involved in politics, teaching, writing, and hosting a couple TV shows, most recently on my old home at Aura TV. He revels in being politically incorrect, he calls out both sides, and he isn't afraid to go down the conspiracy rabbit hole. While I don't agree with everything he says, I love having voices like his out there, keeping the people in power in check and challenging the establishment narrative. So my call to you this week, regardless of whether you agree or disagree with Jesse Ventura, is to be a little more like him in one regard. Don't be afraid to say what you think and share your ideas in the public square. 
We need more people like you to be outspoken now more than ever so we don't only hear from the crazy people. It's not about whether you're right or wrong, it's about whether you're willing to stand up and be counted. Otherwise, we're just gonna let the inmates run the asylum.